Welcome to Every Nation Dorado Congregation. We exist to honor God by establishing Christ-centered, Spirit-empowered, and socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. Here's a look at this week's announcement. To ensure your safety and the safety of others, we ask that you wear your mask at all our services and events at all times. Every Monday, we fast and pray corporately as a church. For face-to-face -face corporate prayer, we meet at the church from 5.30 to 7 p.m. Please note that every first Monday of the month, the men will meet live at the church and the women meet on Zoom at 6 p.m. The Zoom link for the women will be provided on our WhatsApp comms on Monday. Our next meeting will be on the 6th of December. We Care is launching our Christmas boxes for the Children's Cancer Ward. Boxes are available at our offices. We will provide you with a list of items to be placed inside the box. Once you have filled the box, please deliver it to our church office, which is open on Monday to Thursday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and 8 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. on Friday. Thank you for blessing the little ones. We are excited to announce that we will be having a Christmas carol service on the eve of the 24th of December from 6 p.m. and our New Year's Eve service on the 31st of December at 10 p.m. Invite your friends and family members to join us. Our church office will be closing on the 17th of December and reopen on the 4th of January. In case of any emergencies, contact 081 127-0611 As you can see, we are in the process of constructing our building and every dollar counts. You can partner with us through the Pay Today app or you can find our banking details for building fund on our website on the gift page. Let us join hands together to pray and give towards Vision 2021. We value your growth. Connect groups are small groups where we help you to follow Jesus, fish for the lost, and fellowship with other believers. Sign up at our info table to join or lead a Connect group. Visit our website for any additional information at www.envintuk.org. Enjoy the service. Hello everyone and welcome once again to our online platform. It's always a joy to be able to bring the Word of God to you. Uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful season. We just came back last weekend from having our leadership cluster up at the coast, uh, supporting our Swakop Moon Church plant there with some apostolic leaders. And uh, it was really an amazing time that the Lord is ministering in that part of our nation. Whenever you're in Swakop, please make a, an effort to get to our church there. They might be closing down during the end of December. But whenever you're there, uh, we've already received confirmation of some people that have gone to Swakop and uh, while they're there, they could fellowship on Sunday with the church there. And so that's a wonderful thing that the Lord is doing. Also, just with regards to our Monday prayer and fasting, we've got that coming up to, uh, tomorrow. So please remember to join us. We do pray here. Uh, at the venue at 5.30. These are important times in conditioning your spirit. The Word of God speaks of how Jesus spoke to His disciples and said, you need to pray at least for an hour with me. And He says, the spirit of, is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so we condition our spirits in these times of prayer. And many, many people have been touched through that as well. And then uh, we are coming into the end of the year. Uh, there will be some announcements coming through regarding our services. We will probably, uh, coming close to the end of the year, have only one service in the morning. And then we will also announce to you the services which we will be having upstairs after we have our roof sheeting done. Uh, we want to encourage you, if you're around, please make an effort to come out and join the services and fellowship with us in person 
as well. Awesome. So uh, next week we'll be starting with our new series on Christmas uh, in, in December. Uh, today we are going to uh, just share on, on the word. And uh, this is a word that I feel God has laid on my heart specifically for this time and this season. And it's on the subject living by faith, living by faith. So let us pray and then we'll get into the word together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that time around your word is never wasted time and that our hearts are being transformed, Father God, by your word and you're implanting life into our bodies and into our souls and into our spirits, Lord, because your word is living and active. Minister this morning, Father, to those who are listening, to those who are watching, wherever they may be, may this word encourage them and build them up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So we're talking today about living by faith, living by faith. You know, everything that you will do in your life, in your relationship with God, will primarily have to do with your relationship with the Word of God. Because God and His Word are inseparable. The Word of God, the Word of God says in, 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 in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And it says that nothing was made except that which was made through the Word of God. In the beginning God spoke. So His Word is His power. It manifests into the person of Jesus Christ. And so today as we go through this message about living by faith, it is so important that we understand that the key of living by faith is not in many things, but it's really concentrated, truly concentrated in the person of Christ, who is the manifestation of the Word of God. And the more we are acquainted with the Word of God, the more our faith will become biblical faith that will be, be, begin to produce biblical results. You know, the faith that we're talking about today is the kind of faith that overcomes the world. It's the kind of faith that sustains us and holds us in the midst of whatever we may be going through. You know, God never meant for us to feel like orphans in this world. He sent us the Holy Spirit. He gave us, He made us heirs and kings in His kingdom. And He gave us the ability to overcome the world. But all of that is in the realm of the Spirit and we operate therein through faith. The Word of God says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, it says, now faith is the substance of the things that we hope for. It is the evidence of unseen realities. It is the evidence or the title deed, the substance of the things that we do not see. So faith is what we hold on to, which is in the realm of the spirit, which then manifests in the natural because of the realities in the realm of the spirit. Now, just firstly, Faith is essential to your walk with God. This is not something that you ought to uh, study on or read from the Word of God here and there. It should be a primary foundation in your life. Living by faith for the righteous man and the righteous woman is something that is essential. It is necessary. It says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 that without faith it is impossible to please God. Without faith it is impossible. To please God. And the enemy's attempt on our life is always after our faith. It's always to try and bring doubt into our lives so that it discredited, he discredits God in our lives. And faith needs to be based on God's character. It's not only based on what we want and our desires for life, etc., and our lusts and our passions. It should be based on the character of God, on the promises of God, on the word of God. And, and then faith needs to be the kind of faith that knows that nothing is impossible. All things are possible with God. Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. You know, if you consider how people that Jesus commended for their faith in the Gospels, all of them had this in common. All of them came to Jesus. And so that's how faith starts. It is coming to Jesus. It is coming to God with an anticipation, with a hope in our hearts. It is not about 
having a desire in your mind and in your, in your heart apart from Christ. Even the woman with the, with the hemorrhaging, with the blood issue, she heard about Jesus and she came through the crowd to Jesus. And so this is important principles. These are important principles for us to hold in our minds as we go through this message today. I'm going to give us the seven steps of how our faith is to work, how we are, we ought to live by faith very practically. Now, the first principle is this. You must have a word from God. Faith is not based on anything except God's word. God's word is the foundation for faith. It would be like the seed for the planting of a harvest. You cannot expect a harvest if there is no seed. And therefore you cannot expect an outcome in approaching God without a word from God, without the scriptures, without some kind of foundation. Now it's not only that you ought to know what, what the written word of God says. You need to be at a point where that scripture is speaking in your situation specifically. It's a rhema word. It is a spoken word of God. It's like God is speaking this in my situation. James chapter 4 verse 2 says, You do not have because you do not ask, and you ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures. And so it's important that people understand that you, you, you're not supposed to use your faith to try and promote your own pleasures. No, your faith is supposed to link up with God's will. If you consider Israel when they were brought out of, of Egypt into the promised land, all of that was not just because they desired to be free. It was God's purpose and plan to bring them out of Egypt and into the promised land. And to the extent that they joined their faith with that, they were able to be brought out. But when they refused to believe God, that's when they ended up in the wilderness delaying their breakthrough and delaying their miracles. So the first principle is this, you must have a word from God. This is why daily devotion in the word of God is key. Because at that moment in the morning or in the evening, God could be speaking the word that you need. As you are going through the scriptures, as you are reading your Bible, as you are fellowshipping with the word of God, with the, because the word of God is aware, <laughs> hallelujah, it is, it is alive, living and active. We can interact with the, it instructs, it leads us, it speaks to us, it reveals God to us, it opens our eyes, it gives us faith in the moment where we are. It says here in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 17, the Apostle Paul speaking, he says, Therefore I was not vacillating or doubting when I intended to do this, was I? Or what I purpose? Do I purpose according to the flesh? So that with me there will be yes, yes, and no, no at the same time? So what he's saying is this, when I came to you, was my speaking yes and no and maybe and doubting and un un uncertainty? And then he continues to say, verse 19, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me and Sylvanus and Timothy, was not yes and no, but yes in him. Then verse 20, we all know this scripture, but this is the context. For all God's promises, all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And through Christ, our amen means yes, and it ascends to God for his glory. And so all God's promises are yes and amen. The will of God has been set concerning your life in God before you were even born, before you were even created. So God has a purpose in your life. God has a plan for the believer. God has a general purpose and vision for your life and calling for your life. But we must know that it is one, God's will, and two, we must have an amen, an agreement, and a, and a, and a following, an obedience to that word of God. 
Hallelujah. So we're talking today about faith and living by faith. We are living in, in, in times which are unprecedented, but the word of God is consistent and it's still the same. Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And for the stability in your life, all you need to do is stop building your life on the times and the seasons where we are and build your life on the word of God that endures and, and, and abides forever. If you build your life on the word of God by obeying it, not just hearing it, but by obeying it, then you are like a man who builds on the rock, regardless of whether the winds and the storms come, that house will stand. But for the one who builds on sand and every tide of the, of the wave and uh, every weather pattern is a concern for them. And so this is the first principle of living by faith. Get to the word. If you stick to the word, you will always get a testimony. If you stay with the word, even if your eyes and your, your ears are telling you something differently, but if God has spoken, then that settles it. And if you can stand on that word, that very word will produce the will of God in your life. Come hell or high water, it doesn't matter. You will be able to stand because the word of God is indestructible and in corruptible and it is a seed that goes and it, it becomes this mighty force that prevails in your life and so you have to take the word of God first of all find the word of God if you are not born again you are completely lost you are not even aware of God's will concerning your life the first word of God that you are to become acquainted with is that Jesus died for you on the cross and he was raised on the third day and he can justify you before God and give you the gift of salvation and righteousness and forgiveness and transform your whole life if you believe these things you will see the mighty power of the gospel beginning to work in your life all right the second principle is this believe the word hallelujah so you can begin to become acquainted with the word you are hearing the word you are reading the word but you must believe it you must believe it you know it's so important many of us have grown up in Christian environments and Christian homes maybe not some of the younger people but many of us in, in Namibia You'd, you, you'd have to fault yourself if you say that you've never heard the name of Jesus. But despite that, once you hear about the word of God, once you begin to learn about the, the promises of God, you must believe it. Romans chapter 10 verse 13. And believing it is like taking the seed and not just holding it in your hand. You must plant it. Where? In your heart. You must plant the seed in your heart. That is how you begin to ex uh, uh, believe the word of God. By believing the word of God, you are planting the seed in your heart. And obviously your heart must be ready because when you, your heart is not ready, it's full of stones and cistals and all sorts of stones and rocks and hard ground because of the cares of this life, because of the doubts of this life, because of the, 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 uh, the persecutions of this life, because of, of riches and the deceitfulness of this life and all your ambitions. The, the word of God that you are planting can be choked. But once you do step number one, you get to the word. Number two, you must believe the word. That would be the planting of the word. It says in Romans chapter 10 verse 13, whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Verse 14, how then can they call on him whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? And then it says, how will they preach unless they are sent? And so how will you believe if you don't even know about the word of God? So we're telling to you, step number one, get to the word of God. Number two, you must believe the word of God. Then it says, how will they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things and verse 16 however they did not all heed the good news for isaiah says lord who has believed our report so faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of god uh, by the word of christ and so isaiah prophesied and said you know god is doing things that people just don't want to believe that it is so simple to give your life to Christ and be transformed if you humble yourself. And yet people are following all sorts of religions and practices that destroy their lives because they're under the impression that God has not made a way. 
But if you get to the word, the first thing is to become acquainted with the word. And secondly, to believe the word of God, to have a heart that believes. What are some of the practical things that you can do that foster faith and believing in the word of God? Firstly, you must memorize scriptures, remember scriptures, read the scriptures. You must have a time where you are beginning to acquaint yourself. Just get the information of the word of God into your heart. And then you need to get it to the point where you are pondering on it, thinking on it, and where you can see these scriptures that apply to different areas in your life. I remember when I was in high school, uh, there were the Gideons that came to our school, those blue small Bibles that you'll sometimes find in the in the hotels and in the in the guest houses. And and in the in the front or in the back of that Bible, it's a New Testament, there was this list of items and themes. Are you in trouble? Read the scripture. Are you in need of provision? Read the scripture. Are you going through betrayal? Read the scriptures. Are you going through disappointment? Read the scriptures. Are you depressed? Read the scriptures. Are you uh, lonely? Read the scriptures. And so the word of God was contextualized into my situation. And I began to realize that for every situation, in every season, in every circumstance, God God's word was able to apply to me directly. So you got to have that. You got to do that. And then you get, a, get to the point where you meditate and you're speaking the word of God in your situation until you get the rhema. That's where you begin to get that word that applies in your situation. Also, you need to acquaint yourself with testimonies of people in the area that you're trusting God for. So sometimes we're trusting God for a certain area and we know that the word of God says that healing is for us, etc. But then hearing about what Christ has done for others, the testimony of Jesus begins to prophesy into our lives. Another way to practically believe the word of God is listening to good teachings and sermons in the area where you're trusting God or just generally about the word of God. It will really bless your heart and strengthen your faith because there is an anointing that comes in the preaching of the word. Jesus has chosen through the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe and that is not just in the place of getting born again but to rescue you in whatever situation you are, to bring deliverance to you through the message that comes to you. Then also prophetic words in your life. Don't despise prophecies is what the Apostle Paul says. But you use them as warfare tools. So you might be going through a situation where you receive the prophetic word concerning your career or concerning your business or concerning your marriage or concerning your health that is encouraging and comforting. But the devil has been speaking to you something different. You need to use the prophetic word and say, no, but God has said to me X, Y, Z. And those prophetic words obviously need to be considered consistent with the written word of God so that you don't have an unbiblical expectation. And then beyond that, the fifth principle when it comes to believing God's word and building that in your heart, apart from having the scriptures meditating therein, the testimonies, teachings and sermons, prophetic words, then also praise and declaration. Have that uh, a City on a Hill album playing in your car, playing in your PC. Uh, you know, don't just have secular music. We're now going into the festive season. It is important that you cultivate these into your time while you are away, while you're with family, so that you're constantly reminded and filled with the revelation of the word of God. Number three, speak and act the word only. This is critical, only. Because if you do not speak the word and act the word only, you're a double-minded man. You're going back and forth. You're saying the one thing and then you're saying another thing. You're, you're claiming the promise of God and then you are repudiating the promise of God. And that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to agree with God on this side and then uh, disagree with God and agree with the devil on this side or just go with the natural. It is important. Once you have heard the word of God, when you believe the word of God, God. Let your faith be demonstrated in the way that you act and speak. James chapter 2 verse 17. It says, even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead. Being by itself. But someone may well say, I, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without the works and I will show you my faith by my works. And so the word of God reveals very clearly that if you believe, 
the word of God, it will be evident. You know, many people are going through a lot of difficulties, especially in their minds, depression, anxiety, etc. You will have depression and anxiety. It is not a, 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 a question that the, the Bible almost um, avoids. It is not something that the Bible uh, disputes will come on the earth and in people's lives. It says in the last days, men's hearts will fail them. But the word of God says, be anxious for nothing. Philippians, be anxious for nothing. So regardless of your situation, you don't have to allow the depression and the anxiety and all of that to pull you down. You don't need to be continually medicated with that kind of psycholo uh, psych uh, psych uh, psychiatric medication. The word of God is a medicine only if we believe it, only if we apply it, only when we take it seriously. And so it says that our faith should be demonstrated by our works. First, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. He says, but having the same spirit of faith according to what it is, what is written, I have believed. Therefore I spoke. We also believe. Therefore we also speak. <clears throat> Excuse me. Knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus and will present us with you. Very important principle here that he's bringing through. He's saying that when you believe, when the word of God is in your heart, you must speak. Even salvation, you believe in your heart. But confession is made unto salvation. We believe unto righteousness, but we confess unto salvation. The spirit of faith is not quiet. If you believe something, the people will hear it. <laughs> Your spouse will know. <laughs> Your children will hear it. When you believe, and I'm not talking about trying to make yourself believe it by saying it. No, you are saying it because you believe it. That's the way. It is the seed that is already in the ground that is starting to germinate. And the, the leaf, the, 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 the ear of the corn that is breaking through the ground is the speaking words. Even as you have spent time meditating on the word of God, there will come a time when you can't be quiet anymore because you'll be talking and acting as if the Lord has already given that to you, which is the guidance that Jesus gave. He says, when you pray, believe that you have received it already and you shall have it. And so this is the, the third principle. You have to speak and act the word only. Mark 11 verse 21, being reminded, Peter said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed a few days ago has withered and Jesus answered saying them saying to them have the faith of God truly I say to you whoever says to this mountain be taken up and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says is going to happen will have whatsoever he says if you believe what you are saying and you are saying it out of a place of faith you will have what you say. Now, for a lot of people, this is very offensive. Look, I'm just reading the scripture. I'm not trying to push any doctrine. Jesus said that the same way that he spoke to the fig tree and cursed it and it was beginning to wither in the same way, mountains and situations can be affected by the spoken word through the believer. And many people don't want to do this because they've tried and when they tried it didn't work and then they begin to accuse God's word. Let God be true and every man a liar. If you tried it and it didn't work, it just means that you were wrong. All you need to do is get back to the word of God and figure out from the word of God where you missed it. That's all. It's the same thing that I do. There are many times that when I'm in the in spiritual things, exercising myself in godliness, and I try something and I fail, I don't stop and say it doesn't work. I begin to figure out why I couldn't do it. And it's the same thing the disciples asked Jesus, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? And he said to them, it's because of your unbelief. And then he explained to them how to deal with it. And so we mustn't have this pride to think that uh, Christianity is defined by our experiences. No, we must submit ourselves to the experiences of the word of God. And when we have that, we'll be in an ever increasing and growing trajectory in our faith. 
And then verse 24, he says, Therefore I say to you that everything that you pray and ask, believe that you are receiving it, and you shall have it. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 6, verse 45, The good man brings good things out of the good treasure of his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil treasure of his heart, for out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. What is in the heart will be spoken. Remember, we said the word is the seed. Step number one, find a seed. Step number two, plant the seed. Where? In your heart. Make sure that your heart is clean. How do you do that? Through the word of God. The word of God is necessary to rebuke, to correct, to, to, to show you how to prepare your heart. When your heart is prepared, you sow the seed, you begin to believe it. And what you believe, you begin to say. Because out of the abundance of the heart, out of the overflow of the heart, your mouth will speak. You know, these things seem so mechanical. But you know what? The instructions of the Word of God are mechanical to us because we are not acquainted with it. Once we become acquainted with it and we apply it to various situations, it will become second nature to us. The word of God that was planted in our hearts two weeks ago will begin to speak in our conscience, speak in our spirit, and will begin to confess that and declare that and will be, be sustained in our situation. Number four, maintain and protect the new vision. Very important because as you planted the word of God in your heart and you are beginning to say it, there will be counters that will be coming from friends and family and your environment and what you see and your senses. All of them will be speaking contrary to the word of God and you will have to retaliate and speak back. Why? Because out of your mouth comes the sword of the Spirit and cuts down all the attempts of the enemy. And the shield of faith needs to be up to bat away every arrow of the enemy that comes through the mouths of people around us or through the circumstances that want to speak. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Right? And then it says, do not let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to all their body. Do not let them depart out of your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to those who find them, and health to all their body. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the, the springs of life. Fantastic scripture. Let's, let's explain what's happening here. So he says, give attention to my words. It's exactly what we said in the beginning. Guys, people of God, <laughs> whoever you are, to the extent that you value the word of God in your life, you will not see the will of God being fully fulfilled in your life. Repent today. If you have despised the word of God in your life, repent today. You study many things. You spent eight years studying medicine. You've spent 12 years doing your PhD. You've spent this much doing that and doing that. And you have neglected the word of God. And God is convicting people today and saying, you need to spend at least half an hour a day in the word, learning something from my spirit. These are the words of life. And then he says, incline your ear to my saying, meaning, Take time out from your busy schedule to listen to what I have to tell you so that your faith has some foundation. You can't just believe things because you like God. No, you have to believe them as a result of what God has spoken to you. We have believed the word of God, therefore we have spoken. And so there is a reciprocal relationship. When the word speaks into our lives, we then have our hearts so full of the word of God that we begin to uh, uh, confess it and speak consistent, homologia, to speak according to speak consistent in agreement with what God has said. And then he says, do not let them depart from your sight. Mm. Keep them in the midst of your heart. You know, uh, the, the, there's, there's a lot of, of study concerning how to reprogram new, neuro, repro, uh, neuro linguistic reprogramming and all of, they stole all of that from the word of God because they teach about how important it is to have these, um, index cards where you write your goals and you write all your things and your, your daily affirmations. And every time, at, at least once a day in the, in, uh, once uh, every hour, you pull it out of your pocket and you say it under your breath, you know, I'm blessed. 
rest. I'm, I'm moving forward. Things are working. And you confess. This is from the word of God. That's called meditation in the word of God. And so you, you don't do, take your ambitious ideas. No. You take the word of God. The promises of God. And you begin to have your sight on it. Sometimes you have to put it on the mirror where you brush your teeth. And you have to put it on the dashboard of the car. And you have to put it on your screen saver. On the, on the PC and on your phone. So that the word of God will continuously be washing and instructing you. And then he says they are life to those who find them. The word of God is life. It is life. And health to all their body. The Greek word there is marpe. It means medicine. It is medicine. It is not, it, you know, the same way that we take a prescription from the doctor three times a day. And you make sure if you even forgot, you wake up from bed and you quickly go and you put the, uh, the pill and you, and you drink it down. That should be the same way that we treat the medicine of the word of God, which is the scriptures on a daily basis. We need a doses of three capsules every day of the Gospels <laughs> and begin to put that in our body and in our minds. Be, why? Because the world is so filthy and corrupt. It's like, you know, David said, I live among a people who are wicked and evil. Isaiah said the same thing. I live among a people who have unclean lips every day. Even the shows that we watch, the news, everything on the social media, everywhere is speaking unbelief, is cursing God, is blasphemy and all of that. And you don't ever make time to have the word of God in your heart so that you're able to one, wash away all the filth of the word and two, allow the word of God to heal you in the areas where it needs to work. You know, many of us have burned our consciences in our past life and even in our walk with God, we have done things that we shouldn't have done. And so the word of God is the, is the, the medicine, is the necessary healing agent to restore us to health in our body, soul, and spirit. Then he says, um, watch over your heart, watch over your life, watch over your heart with all diligence. It's, it's the idea to say protect, you know, if you have a garden and you are planting vegetables there and you know that there are animals around, you have to put a, a, a hedge around the garden so that you protect the produce. In the same way, the devil is looking to steal the word of God. If he can't steal the word of God and he germinates, he wants to ruin the harvest. And this thing is happening continuously. So what do you do? You put a hedge around your heart, around your life. Why? Because the seed is planted in your heart. And how do you hedge? What is the protective agent for your heart? The word of God. It's all about the word of God. The word of God. So you have a daily discipline. To be in the word of God, not in a legalistic way, I'm just here to tick a box, no. In the way that a, a, a bodybuilder feeds his body very specifically, in the way that someone takes medication very specifically, because they're fighting off a virus or fighting off a bacteria, whatever. And so in the same way, you take the word of God continuously, building a hedge. Whenever there's a thought that comes that wants to pull you away from the word of God, you make sure that you've got a habit of attending church. You make sure that you don't despise, connect, and that you are in places where you can be corrected and discipled. All of that is your way of watching over your heart with all diligence. Why? Because out of it will flow the life that you're trusting and believing God with. Now, what is uh, some of the practical things that you need to keep out of your heart when you are protecting your heart? Because the first thing is obviously that you need to get the word of God, get the seed. Number two, believe the word of God, which is planting the seed. Number three, speak and act according to the word only, which is the word coming out of your heart. And then number four, maintain and protect the vision, the, the word of God in your heart. What are some of the things that seal the word of God in your heart? Number one, offense. When you are easily offended, you will miss God completely. That's what happened with the religious leaders in the time of Jesus. He was the fulfillment of all the prophets and the law. And they missed it because they were offended with him. Be careful if you are offended with anyone, you're in a place where the word of God can't find root in your heart. Number two, sins and ungodliness. You know, if you are unrepentant in your heart, you can put the word of God there with the same speed that it goes in is the same speed that is going out. It's like someone who is putting money in a, a, a torn pocket. 
As you put in, as you invest in, you're wasting your time. And so the Holy Spirit will always convict you into a place of repentance and get accountability so that you've got someone who can help you and check up on you and say, how are you dealing with that sin? How are you dealing with that habit? How are you dealing with that one? So that you can have that rebuke and correction. Why? Because the rebukes and the blows of, of a friend and someone with you is the way that God sharpens the countenance. Iron sharpening iron. Exactly. And then another thing that steals the, the word of God and the life in your heart is worldliness and naturality or carnality. It's very important that you are very careful about all the very natural things that people accept. Even, you know, everything concerning how you should do your relationships and, and all the advice you get from the world. It sounds very good. It doesn't sound sinful, but it's just not what the word of God provides. Very, be very careful because the enemy will many times replace the word of God as scripture, word from God with another scripture that was not inspired by God. The enemy of best is good. If he can't get you to marry the wrong person, he'll get you to marry a good person, but not the person that maybe God has for you. And I'm not saying, you know, that you now need, need to leave your wife because uh, uh, you think you miss them. The word of God now has, a, has something to say about that. But be very careful about naturality and carnality. Even when it comes to your finances and things, God's word wants to speak to you, provide for you. He's telling you, come on, partner with the building. Come on, give that, you know. And all your naturality and carnality and worldliness and all your insurances are telling you, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> be careful with those things from the word of God. Let's just be wise here, you know. And so it's very dangerous. And then number four, pride and self-righteousness. Having this sense of self-righteousness that you are good because you are good. Mm -mm. There is no one that is good. No, not one. All of us have gone astray. Each one like sheep, each one to his own way. It is only by the grace of God that we have been saved through faith in Christ Jesus, not of ourselves. And that grace is the one that teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts in this evil generation. And then unbelief and mistrust and skepticism. We live in a cynical society. I mean, you can't even believe the quotes that you see on your on your feed on Facebook or on Instagram or on TikTok. You can't believe the quotes. You know, people fabricate their voices now. They fabricate everything. You can't believe anything. And so then people come to the word of God with that same skepticism. Be careful. You need to be like a child when you're dealing with the word of God. You need to, obviously you're discerning and, and the, uh, the Holy Spirit is teaching you how to interpret the word of God. But be careful if you have, you have that eye that is like, mm, 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 how can Jonah, how can Jonah fit in the world? Mm, mm, how can, mm, mm. If you are like that, the word of God will go, will go, will be too low for you to, to take hold. You know, it's just like the, 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 the process of mining diamonds. It's in the dirt. It's in the ground. You have to stoop low. You have to put aside your apparent wisdom. Because uh, the word of God says that God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And so you must approach the word of God with that heart to say, hey, I don't know everything. Let the word of God speak to me. And many times, you know, people have this cynicism because they're living in sin anyway. And they don't want the word of God to establish in their lives because then they have to repent of that lifestyle, which is anyway a good thing for all of us. Then number five, expel doubt and unbelief. Mark chapter six, verse four, Jesus said unto them, a prophet is without honor, is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own family and in his own house. And he could do there no mighty work except that he laid hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled. <laughs> If Jesus can be amazed, he was amazed. <laughs> he marveled. Sure, <laughs> he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around the villagers teaching. You know, some of us, Jesus marvels at our unbelief. You know, the word of God is very clear concerning the promises of God for our lives. And yet, and yet, we will not believe. Even after we've seen miracles, many of us growing up in church, we've seen miracles, we've heard testimonies, all of that. And then when it comes to our own life, we, we don't believe. Or we say we believe, but then you can tell by our actions that we don't. 
And so this is very important, expelling doubt and unbelief. Why? It will limit the power of God. The same way that the, the, the offense and the doubt and the unbelief in Jesus' hometown limited his power is the same way that your unbelief can limit the power of God. But God has a solution on how to expel that. Consider James chapter 1 verse 4. He explains further, he says, but you must ask in faith, asking for wisdom. Ask in faith without doubting. Because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, very important principle, blown and tossed by the wind. And that man should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. A double-minded man is a man who will also be double-spoken. One day you believe in God and you're saying good things. The next day you're speaking against what you, you said yesterday. And so when you are like that, go back to the word. Establish your heart on the truth. Once the truth is truly established, you won't vacillate. You won't be double-minded. Because if you are double-minded, don't expect the miraculous to be happening. No. And word of advice. If you are double-minded, at least keep your mouth shut concerning the opposite feelings that you might be feeling. doesn't matter what your feelings say. If you are consistent with the word of God and speaking the word of God, if you are feeling something, just continue to speak and act according to the word of God. This is the principle of faith acted out. It's how the miraculous operates. This is my encouragement to you. And some of us might be in a place where we are just pretending, we are saying all the right things, but we are not believing. Go back to step number one, two, and three. Believe the word of God. You know, continue to plant it in your heart. Maybe there's something in your heart. Maybe there's unforgiveness. Maybe there's something that's in your heart that's hindering you from actually trusting God because you also don't trust anybody in the whole world. And so it's very important. He says that man should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Hallelujah. What a hectic revelation. If you have doubt, you don't get nothing. So does that mean we have to have this completely pure faith? No. Start off by controlling your mouth. After that, establish the process of having meditation in the Word of God. Meditation in the Word of God will produce in you what it needs to produce. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 4. Just consider, God did so much to bring Israel out of Egypt. And yet, at the threshold of their promise... They turned around and went into the desert for 40 years. 40 years. Is it God's will for them to leave Egypt? Yes. Was it God's will for them to enter into the promised land? Yes. He parted the Red Sea to get them there. But then what happened? They started to speak something else. There were 10, 12 spies. Two of them said, they brought a report. They said, we can take the land. God is with us. The other 10 said, that we were like grasshoppers in that place. And uh, there are giants there. And how did you bring to the point where people started crying? And God said, Moses, give them what they want. Nobody will enter. And he swore only Joshua and Caleb entered it. In the same way, it says, for unto us, the Hebrews chapter 4 verse 4. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. You know, one of the good things that deals with unbelief is fasting. If you're struggling with your faith, fasting, and not just fasting, staying the whole day, not eating anything. Fasting, and fasting all the social media, all books, and just be in the Word of God. Sometimes there's a book that God might uh, lead you to read of a great man of God, a woman of God, and that Word will speak to you over the two days or three days that you are fasting. Your faith will be blown up, and you'll see a miracle coming through. I remember hearing a testimony of a man that they, they didn't have the finances to be able to even have their baby, because it costs so much to to deliver the baby in the in the private hospital and so then you know the time was drawing near and the wife is just giving you those looks you know and then what he did is he decided to fast and after two days of fasting he got a rhema word from God just being in the word of God declaring the word of God reading meditating the word of God and it was a day later that someone called them and say, hey, how's your wife you know we just felt from the Lord to bless you guys with this amount it was exactly the amount for the bill of the hospital so God will provide in that way, but we receive through our heart, out of the heart, a good man brings good things. It doesn't come from the, from the airport. 
It doesn't come through, through, through the, the waterfall. It comes from your heart. This is why he says protect your heart. It is the usher that brings from the realm of the spirit into the natural through your mouth. Very, very important. Very important, all right? And then Matthew chapter 17, verse 21, he said to them, because of your unbelief, I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here today, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. But this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So very important that we establish that in our hearts. Then the last two principles, number one, abounding thanksgiving. Hallelujah. You know, when you know that you have received from God, thanksgiving and praise. <laughs> thanksgiving and praise. First Peter chapter, chapter 1 verse 6. He says, believing in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. And then number seven, get convicted about God's love. So this is very powerful. You know, you, when you get to step six, oh, you have it. <laughs> you have it. And, and your praise and your joy becomes a shield as well. I mean, people won't want to tell you otherwise because you are already at the praise level. This is the highest form of faith is when you are already at the thanksgiving level and at the joy level. You are feeling what you know is already yours and you are not fabricating it. You really know that it's yours. <laughs> I've got so many testimonies about that kind of joy. And, you know, sometimes you'll be in a situation which looks like a fire. And yet you are joyful and thankful. What does that mean? You are seeing something else besides what people are seeing. Because they are just seeing what they see with their natural eye and with their natural ear. But when you see with the eyes of your heart and the word of God is a foundation for your promise. And you know that God is faithful. Songs of joy and celebration, thanksgiving are the order of the day. And then verse 7, and so, so if you're at the point where you believe in God, but your life is full of complaints, I'm telling you now, you have not yet gotten enough of the word uh, to be in your heart, or you have allowed your heart to be exposed to some attack, and you need to begin to restore that through step one and two and three. Very important. The word of God is the healing, healing agent for even disappointment. There's no other thing. You can't go to some counselor, oh, God disappointed me <laughs> and all of that. No, <laughs> disappointments, perceived disappointments from God are only healed by faith in God. <laughs> uh, uh, and so, you know, there's no counselor that can counsel us because of the offenses that we have with God. We must go to God. And when we get to him, we will see that he will bind us up. And then verse 7 Get convicted about God's love. You know, when you are at the point of thanksgiving and joy, you know, uh, Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 says, For in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything, but faith working through love. There is a principle that your ability to sense the love of God in your spirit is your signal that you are in faith with God. Not in love, but in faith with God. How do you know that you can be in love with God? You must be in faith with God. You cannot be in, in love with God without being in faith with God. Hmm. That sounds like a song. And so very important that we have this understanding. Many people say, I'm struggling with doubts. Get to the word of God. The word of God is the, the, the material for faith. Faith comes by hearing by the word of God. And as you become more acquainted with the word of God, rightly, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the love for God will grow. But it is because you realize God's love for you first that you begin to grow in love with God. So you, go, you are in faith with God and his word, and that makes you aware of the love of God, and that makes you also reciprocate the love. The word of God says in the, in the epistle of John, we love him because he first loved us. Romans 8 verse 32, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, freely give us all things? One of my favorite scriptures 
in the word of God, Romans 8, 32, that God is generous. If he's given his son, what are all the other things that we apparently need or even desire for our enjoyment? God has made provisions in Christ. It's all in Christ. Christ is the evidence of God's yes to my prayers. And I just have to give the amen. But it happens in the realm of the spirit, in the realm of my heart, in the realm of interacting with the word of God, in the realm of faith, because faith is the title deed. Once I have it in faith, I have it in reality. Because it's like, if I have the title deed from the, from the deeds office saying, this is my property with my name written on it, I don't even have to go to the plot. I know that it's mine. This is the evidence. And when you have faith, and these are some of the signs coming up in your, in your speaking and in your, in your joy and in your thanksgiving and in your love, you will know that you have it. And it's a matter of days before it comes through hallelujah i'm ending with this proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 he says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight straight you might be listening to me today and 2021 has been a difficult year for you as for many and you're saying that sure I, I see someone who's saying, oh, my faith almost failed this year because of the disappointments. For someone else, I see someone else, you're saying, the hardships I had made me come back to God. And all of that, all of that is to show us the same thing. Christ is the center of it all. Whether we try to run away from, from, from something, it's running from Christ. Whether we're coming back, it's coming back to Christ. Christ is the center. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who is the only hope for our lives. But as much as Jesus came to the earth 2,000 years ago, and we'll talk more about that during our sermon series in, in, in Christmas, and, and as much as he came to the earth, there are many who are perishing while Jesus came to give them life. And what is the issue? No faith. No faith. So living by faith, it's not about just getting our needs met. The first need of man is to know Christ. Oh, that I might know him. Oh, that I might truly become a new creation. And that is our first desire. Using our faith to know God. If I get nothing else in this life, the Apostle Paul says, I count all my achievements as done that I may gain Christ and so very important that we have this understanding if we have Christ in him are all the riches and the fullness of God if we have Christ that becomes the foundation for everything so right now I want to encourage those of us who are who are convicted in our hearts to just begin to repent in the areas where we have neglected the word of God Christ is the word of God made flesh. And if we've neglected the word of God, I'm, I'm encouraging you, let December be a month of the word of God with your family, with your spouse, on your own, wherever you might be traveling, make it a habit every day. No, no Bible, no breakfast, no Bible, no dinner, no Bible, no lunch. Download the Bible app for you to listen whenever you've got 15 minutes slot, you know. It's wonderful the things that God will begin to do in your life through that. And then there's some of us, we, we've got enough of, of the word of God. We just need to begin to believe it and begin to be thankful in our hearts. I wanna encourage you, these seven principles have in my life been a strength of God. Why? They are from the word of God. It's my anchor to show me my, my North Star every time to say, there's the word. There's the word. Oh God, I need you. There's the word. Oh God, I, you know, and even as much as worship is wonderful and uh, worship music and praise and all of that is wonderful, nothing can replace the word of God being read, being meditated on and being believed and being expressed. That is the atmosphere of faith. Let us, let us begin to prepare our hearts already as we are preparing to go into the new year in 2022. The Lord is gonna speak to us even in the month of December. Let us begin to stir up our hearts towards faith. And then I see uh, people here 
You need to make a recommitment to Christ. I see some people who are backslided from, from, from their faith. And, and you're in a place where you feel like you can't even open the Bible. You don't know. Uh, there's just guilt. And, and God is saying, come home. He's inviting you. So please join us in the services wherever you can. You know, invite friends and family. This is going to be a time of great harvest. But it's important. Live by faith and not by sight. Live by faith. Are you going through a difficult time? Put your faith in Christ. Are you going through a good time? Put your faith in Christ. Are you prosperous? Put your faith in Christ. Are you struggling financially? Put your faith in Christ. Are you healthy in your body? Put your faith in Christ. Are you sick in your body? Put your faith in Christ. All of it is based on that hope and faith in Christ. Amen. Let, let me pray for us and then we'll, 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 we'll continue into the week. Father, we thank you, Lord, that your word is like a seed and it falls to the ground and the rain comes and waters it. And I just pray right now, Lord, for every person listening, that they will have a conviction concerning the Word of God. Living by faith is living by the Word. Living by faith is living by the Word, says the Spirit of God. Living by faith is living by the Word. Daily faith means daily Word. Daily Word means daily faith. And so, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are speaking this, this day, Lord, to our hearts, Lord. And I thank you that you are drawing us closer to your son, Jesus Christ, that our faith and our eyes might be on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher, the author and perfecter of our faith, Lord God. And we look to you only. We pray a blessing over the church, Lord. We pray divine protection over everyone who's traveling this time, Lord. We pray divine grace and blessing over families, Lord God. We pray that people will grow spiritually in this time in December, Lord God. That people will continue growing in the word, Lord. And that when we return, Father God, as we are going through December as well, we thank you that you'll be doing wonders and miracles as we believe your word. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Awesome. I, I, I pray that you were encouraged by that word and may you continue to go deeper through these scriptures and that you will memorize these steps so that you may be able to teach others how to live by faith. We will see you soon. And if you're traveling, please. Uh, we, we have a conviction in your heart that the Lord is with you and don't stop reading the word of God and reaching out to the lost. So with that, we'll, we pray that God will continue to bless you and we will see you soon. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for listening. For more information about this podcast and other resources, please visit envintook.org.